Pan ddywedwyd wrth frenyn yr aifft fod y bobl wedi ffoi, newidiodd agwedd ffarw a'i weision deg atynt ac meddent, beth yw hyn a wneithom, y rydym wedi rhyddhau yr Israeliaid o'n gwasanaeth. Felly paratodd ffarw a'i gerbyd ac aeth a'i fyddyn gyda gef, cymerodd hefyd chwe chant o gerbydau dethol a'r holl gerbydau eraill oedd yn yr aifft a chapden ar bob un. Caledodd yr arglwydd galon ffaro bryn yn yr aifft, ac erlidiodd hwnnw'r Israeliaid wrth iddynt fynd ymaith yn fuddigol ieithus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on the left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day. One of the things that often happens over Easter weekend and which we are going to miss this year is that churches build bonfires in front of their main door. Uh, Here in front of the cathedral, there is normally a bonfire on the evening before Easter day. Some people do it in the evening. Some people do it just before dawn uh, on on Easter Sunday. And sometimes they're little braziers and sometimes they're roaring fires. But those bonfires are a really important part of what happens overnight of Holy Saturday into Easter day. Why a bonfire? Uh, They're great fun, uh, they're very dramatic, but what's the significance of them? Well, there are two things that are associated with those fires that also usually happen uh, on Easter Eve. One is that we light for the very first time, we light a huge candle. We call it the Paschal candle, the Easter candle. And it's big enough to go on lighting in our buildings right through the coming year. We keep it lit at times, special occasions like baptisms. It's a reminder of the day of resurrection to us. And the very first time we light it is from the bonfire. The other thing we do is that we hear the singing of the exultat, uh, the song of praise, the declaration of God's glory and his victory in the resurrection. And uh, that uh, song has been sung uh, down the ages almost since the time of Christ himself. It is the declaration 
that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. But the bonfire is also a reminder of that really dramatic story of the rescue of the people of Israel out of slavery. Uh, it is an extraordinary story that has captured the imagination, not just of the Jewish people, but of Christians as well, of all time. It begins, of course, with God himself being present to the people of Israel in the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, something they can see by day and by night. God's presence surrounds them and protects them as they flee out of the bondage of Egypt, out of slavery. And it is a reminder to us every Easter tide in, in our bonfires, it is a reminder to us uh, that God acts in history. He acts on our behalf. He is ever present to us. He never deserts his people. He never lets us go. He doesn't abandon us. When we are going through times that seem really quite dark and as if we'll never get to the end of them, God is ever present in that pillar of cloud and that pillar of fire. No bonfires this year, uh, no open churches, but the day of resurrection is still declared. And our freedom, our liberty, which is so precious to God, is something that we claim on this Easter tide. We rejoice in the fact that uh, when our restrictions are over and when we are free indeed to go where we wish, actually what we have to remember is a deeper freedom, a freedom that comes from the fact that God is always on our side. God is our keeper and our strength. God is the one who leads us out of slavery and who always surrounds us with his care and protection. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in Christ.